All right, so in Chapter 11, Informative Speaking, we're going to be talking about your responsibility as an informative speaker. We'll be discussing how you would provide basic facts, communicate new information, encourage a new perspective, and your responsibilities of clearly presenting facts and conclusions. Your goal is to inform versus to persuade. So informative speaking goals. Let's look at the first one, presenting new information. It's very important when you provide an informative speech that you're providing your audience new information. You know, most audiences don't want to sit and listen to a speech that's providing things that everyone's already heard before. You don't want to provide any old news. You don't want to provide uh, dated information and data. So it's very important in order to get your audience interested in your topic that the information you're providing is new to them. It's not just a recycled old topic that you're just providing the same information over and over. You also want to provide new perspectives. Now, in doing this, you're not persuading your audience, but maybe you're taking a topic a little bit deeper than they've ever considered it before. Sometimes when you narrow a topic, you're able to really dig in and provide a new perspective on a topic where your, your audience may say, you know what, I thought I knew a lot about this topic, but this information makes me look at it completely differently. So a new perspective is always good in adding audience interest. You also want to generate positive over or negative feelings. So one thing you might be doing in an informative speech is providing things that might lift up your audience. It might inspire. It might motivate. Um, it may just be providing some information that is interesting to them. Or on the other side, sometimes you are putting some sort of alarm into your audience. Maybe you're providing a speech because you feel like the topic is super important. It can impact a lot of people. And it's very important that they have all the information necessary about the topic. So with the negative feelings, sometimes those are topics about current issues, uh, things like maybe our environment, things about like political issues. There are a lot of very uh, timely issues that may provoke negative feelings, but let's look at it more as in you're making your audience aware of important issues. And sometimes when we educate ourselves on important issues, it it's uncomfortable. It puts us in an uncomfortable position because it's information, you know, sometimes we just don't want to hear, but it's important that we do. So providing new information, you want to offer clear concise, well-researched data. So you want to make sure that your information isn't muddled. It's not so convoluted that your audience doesn't understand what you're saying, that you've simplified your information um, that you've researched. But you want to research the information thoroughly and then provide that in a very simple way. Sometimes one of the first keys to an instructor on plagiarism is that the research is presented in a way that it's very muddled, it's very complicated, it has technical terms instead of layman's terms, and that's a good indicator that maybe the statements in your speech were lifted from some other research and not interpreted by you and, and then cited in your speech appropriately. You also want to deliver a well-structured speech. Uh, as a speech, speech instructor, one of the most important things that I look for in your speeches is a clear organization. In order to provide information to your audience, you need a well-structured speech with very clear, concise organization. I, I teach in this course, you typically have three main points, and you make those points very clear to your audience. You also want to help your audience understand meaning. There are times that maybe a, a presenter may choose a topic that is, you know, old news to them. It's something they've heard a thousand times. It's something they're so familiar with. And so then when they're presenting it to their audience, they forget that not everyone has such a grasp on the topic that they do. So it's always important that you help your audience understand the meaning behind what you're saying. Um, and this goes back to making a clear, concise speech that isn't muddled. It doesn't have too many technical terms. And it allows your audience to really understand what you're telling them. Then the new perspectives. You want to frame your content to give a new context. 
So there's a lot of topics that have been around forever. A lot of controversial issues, a lot of political issues, a lot of things that keep coming up year after year. So if you want to do a topic that seems pretty repetitive, it, but it's still current in its own way, then frame that content in a new way. Put it in a new context. Take some information that may not be as known about the topic and revolve your speech or design your speech around that. So you frame the information that you have into a new context. Again, we're going to go back to organization. You want to organize your facts in an engaging way. Um, in organization, you want to make sure that everything's very clear and concise, but you also want to make sure that you organize your information so it has the most impact. So, you know, we talk about with different types of research, and this is especially important with the persuasive, but also an informative. If you want to pull in your audience, you provide logical information, you provide facts and statistics, but anytime you can provide some personal information like pathos, emotional appeal of some sort, then your audience is going to be more engaged. You're covering the gamut. Make your content memorable. Make the information something they haven't heard before, something that's not repetitive, and so it'll have more of an impact and it'll be memorable to your audience. Tie the speech to pre-existing attitudes. So if you want to generate emotion, the first thing you do is tie that speech to pre-existing attitudes. You know, kind of tie it in to something else they've, they've considered. If this is a new topic to them, connect it to something that's very familiar. Organize your speech around a central theme. In the organizational chapter, we talk about the various organizational methods that you might use. You could use chronological around time, sequential steps of a process, spatial is the physical location of things, logical is just a logical theme or division. Um, these are all ways that you can have a central theme with your organization to make it very clear to your audience. Again, use positively and negatively charged terms, and this will give impact to your audience and it emotes uh, some emotion from your audience. So, what are some positive and negative synonyms? So, you might say tidy versus obsessive, self-confident versus arrogant, dynamic versus chaotic, innovative versus unproven, cost-effective versus stingy, Voluptuous versus fat, creative versus weird, thrifty versus cheap, and prudent versus selfish. If you go into the education field, believe me, you'll really learn how to use these positive terms um, because you'll kind of learn how to shine a positive light on maybe some negative things that you see in your student. Um, information, um, choosing an informative goal. Number one, Use shock value to create concern. If you want to get your audience involved, shock value is a good way to do that. Now, that doesn't mean be inappropriate, um, but it does mean get statistics and data that is eye-opening, that really gets the attention of your audience. Use neutral attitude with the skeptical. So just like we'll talk about in the persuasive topic, if you know you have someone that's skeptical about your topic, you approach it neutrally. Address resistance to your ideas up front. It's always a good idea if you're providing information that you think people may question if you're accurate. Address anything that you think someone might be thinking against what you're saying and, and make the point of that. Say, I know that some people research this and interpret it in this way, but based on the information I found, this is what I believe. This is what I, I believe supports this information. Um, then your responsibilities. Number one, your responsibility is to find relevant and credible information. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sources you don't use. Everybody knows you don't use Wikipedia as a credible source. It could be changed by any of us at any time. You use relevant information. Sometimes that's not the easiest to find. Sometimes that's more challenging to locate, but it's the best information to gather. And you use credible information. When you're giving an informative speech, it's very important that you're your data comes from neutral sources. You're not choosing your information from a biased source to make sure it's a very credible information. Make sure your information is from a valid news source or publication, journal article, university um, researchers. Something like that is always the best way to gather your information. Present factually correct information. Remember that 
there's probably someone in the audience that's familiar with your topic. And they're going to know if the information you choose is not factually correct or if you've changed it to say what you want it to say. So make sure that you prevent, present the information factually as you have found it. Use clear and accessible facts. Once again, don't use muddled information that's so complicated that your audience can't even figure out what you're talking about. Make sure it's very clear. Make sure it's accessible to your audience, meaning there's not technical terms. It's not convoluted. And this is sometimes where visual aids come, become in handy. Um, because if you have more complicated information that you feel is really necessary, rather than just saying your st stats and statistics and your data, have a, a graph or a chart that indicates what you're saying. And that can make sometimes the most the more complicated information more accessible to your audience. Make information digestible. Um, you guys are college students. You totally know what it means to have information overload, where you get so much information it's impossible to digest. Or the information is such on such a higher level that it's hard for you to break it down and understand it. So make sure that the information that you use is digestible to the audience. Simplify things. Make it clear and concise. Provide useful and relevant data. Don't stretch whether or not a piece of information is relevant to your topic. Make sure it's very clear how the data that you're presenting has a direct relationship with your topic. Principles. Make your facts understandable. Explain the relevant. It's always a good idea when you're providing an informative speech to tell the audience why this topic is relevant to them. Create clarity. Simplify. Make things short and concise. And make sure that you are connecting what you're saying and making it clear to the audience. Use short, direct sentences not too long, run on. You know, I've said this before in an earlier video. When we're writing for the ear, it's important to be simple and short. When we write an essay or a composition for English, I think most of our instincts is to make it a very long, drawn out, complicated compound sentence. But for the ear, simple is better. Um, parse long list into sound bites. So if you have like a long list of something that you want to say, um, combine things as best as possible because your audience is going to zone out at some point. So your topic choices, objects, events, people, processes. Now we won't be doing a, a demonstration or a how-to speech in this class, so that's not exactly an option um, uh, for this course. And ideas. So these are the different op the options that you have. So let me kind of give you some examples of some speeches I've heard. So objects, I've get, gotten a lot of information on things like hybrid cars, cell phones, um, video games, computers, events. Um, there's sometimes students have gone on a specific vacation and there's something that they observe there. For example, I believe the hot air balloon festival that's I think in New Mexico. Students have given speeches on that and what it's like. I've taught a lot of students that are at A&M and so they talk about the different traditions and events at A&M. Um, or you may be a history buff and there's something specific in history you want to talk about. People, you may talk about your favorite politician, you may talk about um, your favorite uh, leader, you know, deceased or alive. Some people like to talk about their favorite musician or actor or actress, um, but this is also always an option. Now, these are research-based speeches, so you wouldn't give this over someone you know that you can't gather research on. And then ideas. There are so many different theories out there. Um on different scientific things, things like that. If you really enjoy that, um, then you may give us speeches on different ideas, theories, hypotheses, things like this. Um, you know, students oftentimes want to go in and talk about medical field issues. Um, you know, we're all kind of intrigued with WebMD and different things we can read on there. So medical topics are always pretty popular. So in choosing an informative goal, you use shock value with the uninterested. So the harder, um, more obvious the data and statistics are that you have, that may pull in those that are disinterested in your topic. Use a neutral attitude with the underwhelmed. Use neutral delivery of facts for the logical. 
at address resistance to your ideas up front. So techniques, you define the issue, you describe the issue, and you explain the issue. So define what you're talking about, describe it in great detail, you can provide images, visuals, graphs, charts, and then you explain the information um, in detail so that your audience completely understands what you're saying. So choices make information effective. Keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate your topic for a small amount of time. Use your support material wisely. Connect your topic to your audience. Organize your information to inform and captivate your audience. And choose effective language. Use concrete language. Use clear language. Um, use layman's terms rather than technical terms that uh, your audience may not understand. So alternative speech formats, I think most of you have probably watched a TED Talk, um, and TED Talks approach things a little bit differently. Um, they look at the three laws of communication. It's usually always emotional. They're usually novel. They're usually taken from an approach that you might not have expected. Um, their topics are usually pretty specific and not always very broad. And they're always memorable. So if you've never watched a TED Talk, look up TED Talks and look up a topic that you're interested in. And they're always very interesting videos to watch. Um, the Pecos Kucha, more flexible than a TED Talk. It's a more spontaneous method. Um, and with this, you kind of uncover the unexpected because you're kind of going where you feel like it needs to go without a lot of preparation. This isn't going to be what we do in this class. You're going to prepare thoroughly the speech that you give. So in conclusion, keep it simple. Connect your information to the audience. Introduce new ideas and perspective. Define and explain your content. Organize things effectively. Choose your materials and your language wisely. Thank you for your time.